Hey friend, Kelsey here from Seed and Sparrow Homestead. Welcome back to my channel. I think for this week's video, we're just gonna be hanging out in the kitchen. Um, a bit of a what we eat in a week style video. Um, sharing some meal inspiration, just chilling in the kitchen. Um, today, I have a few recipes to share with you. Um, it is cold today. It was super hot. It's been unseasonably warm here, but we've entered into this cold snap and now my body is back to wanting like comfort food, warm things, and I'm really wanting soup. So I'm making soup tonight. We're gonna do a potato leek soup um, with like bacon and cheddar cheese. It's really good. And I'm gonna do a crusty Dutch oven loaf to go with that which is super simple. If you've ever struggled with making bread, this is a great place to start. So I'm going to walk you through how I do that. Um, I've got some cherry pie filling pulled out. I think I want to make a cobbler tonight and a few other things going on. So I'm gonna bring you along today and maybe throughout the week and just share a little bit of meal inspiration. So the first thing I'm gonna start on is the Dutch oven loaf because it does have a little bit of a rice time. So let's get to work on that. All right, for the bread recipe. First step, I have one and a half cups of warm water. You don't want it hot. Hot's gonna kill your yeast. Too cold and the yeast won't activate. I have an entire video on bread making and I throw in some tips and tricks in there. I will link it for you on the screen and down below if you wanna check that out. So I'm throwing in that one and a half cups of the warm water. I gotta grab my measuring spoons and then I need two and a quarter teaspoons of this is dry active yeast and two and a quarter teaspoons is the same as what would be in like the little packets that you can get at the store so to the yeast i am adding a half teaspoon of sugar just to give it something to feed on basically um and i am just going to get this all mixed up make sure everything is well dissolved and then we're gonna let it sit for about five minutes until the yeast Sorry, there is a fly in here. So the yeast is activated and it's all nice and bubbly. Okay, yeast is doing its thing. I'm gonna move on to the next recipe, which is red beet eggs. This is a big thing in the area where we're from. This is PA Dutch territory. Red beet eggs, like any store you go to, you can find them. It's usually at any picnic that you will go to any gathering, family gathering around here, there are red beet eggs. I don't know if that's a thing around the rest of the US or abroad, but here in Dutch country PA, you will always find red beet eggs. So I like to make them this time of year. My husband loves salads during the summer. I'm always looking for more ways to add protein to those salads. So these red beet eggs are a great way to do that. All it is is boiled eggs, vinegar, um, sugar, and red beets. Um, so I need to get all of my eggs here peeled and then we'll work on throwing this all together. I have a half gallon mason jar here to which I am adding one half cup of white vinegar, one half cup of sugar, then we're going to add in two cans of, this is my home canned, these are golden beets use whatever color beets you want. This is what I have right now. I actually prefer these. I think they're a little bit sweeter than your um, typical red beet. So that's what I'm using. I'm just going to stir this all up and if I would have thought better I should have stirred the sugar and the vinegar together better before adding in the beets, but oh well, it's fine. All right, then I'm just going to start adding in all of my boiled eggs and burying them underneath the beets. Okay. 
Isn't that such a lovely color? I love it. So I'm going to put these in my fridge. I let them go for about 48 hours before we start eating them to really give them time to absorb all of the flavors, but they're delicious. I really hope you try them. All right, our yeast is nice and activated. Let me show you that quick here. See how nice and bubbly that is in there? So that's good and activated and ready to go. To our yeast mixture, I am adding three and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I'm also gonna add in a half a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna get this mixing up. You don't really have to worry about kneading this. You just want everything to be well incorporated. All right, so this dough is very wet and sticky. That's okay, just trust the process. Now I'm just going to cover this and allow it to rise for about two, maybe even three hours um, until it has doubled. Sometimes it's even less than that. It really just depends on the temperature in your home. I'm gonna go stick it by my oven because that is on right now and keep it in a warm spot, which will help get it there faster. So that's all we're gonna do now. Cover it, let it rise until doubled. So next up I've got to get stuff ready for my soup. So on my burner, I've got some butter melting, a um, couple tablespoons worth. I am going to chop up six potatoes and I've got two fairly large, medium to large leeks that I am going to slice up as well. Our leeks are nice and soft, but getting slightly brown and caramelized. I'm gonna add in about two cloves worth of garlic. Stir that in. I'm gonna add in six cups of chicken broth. is boiling. I am going to get these potatoes in here and then um, I'm going to cover this and I'm going to turn down my burner and allow it to simmer until these potatoes are soft, fork tender. All right, so to the oven I am putting in, um, this is just a pie plate with half a cup of butter. That's going to be for our cherry cobbler, and then I also have my Dutch oven preheating in here. You want it nice and hot before adding in your bread loaf. On to our cobbler. I'm gonna make the batter for that. It's one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, half teaspoon of salt, mix that together. Now I'm adding in about a half cup of milk. It's a half cup to no more than three quarter cup. You just want the batter to be nice and smooth. I'm also going to add in about a half teaspoon's worth of vanilla. I'm 
We're gonna add in our batter right into that melted butter. I know this is a lot of butter and sugar, but I think everything in moderation is just fine. We don't eat these types of desserts very often, but when we do, I go all out. At this point, you can customize this to whatever you like. Use any fruit, pie filling. I have some canned cherry pie filling here that I am going to add over the top. I will make this cobbler recipe over the course of the summer a few times with whatever is in season. We love it with strawberries. It's especially good as a combination of peach and blackberry. I'm gonna get this back in the oven and uh, bake it at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes. All right, so the bread has doubled. I'm gonna try and get it out of here as carefully as I can without deflating too much of it, although it is just, it's gonna deflate a little bit. And try and shape it a little bit just by pinching in the edges into a bit of a, a round loaf. Now I'm just gonna carefully put it on another piece here, flip it over so that the flour is on the top. And then if you would like at this point, you can take a really sharp knife. Um, if you have a sourdough lane and you can, um, make a few slits in it, but it doesn't need it. So this is going to go into the 400 degree oven for 35 minutes with the lid on. After those 35 minutes, I will remove the lid and I will bake it for another 10 minutes or so until the top is nice and brown. Her potatoes are now nice and tender. I've turned down the heat even lower and I'm going to add in a can of cannellini beans that have been drained and rinsed. I'm also going to add in one cup of heavy cream. Now this step is optional. I like to mash it up a little bit with a potato masher. It just gives it a little bit of a creamier base. You can also take an immersion blender and blend it up as much or as little as you want. All right, so everything is either cooking or baking. I'm gonna quick run outside to my garden and grab some chives because I wanna put them on top of the soup. You're gonna do it while looking very fashionable, of course. The rain has finally passed. It has been pouring for basically two days. But I gotta grab my chives, which are over here. back inside our bread is all done looking beautiful this is such an easy loaf of bread to make if you have been hesitant to try or have had a bad experience you need to try this loaf
All right, you guys, it is the next day. And on today's agenda for dinner, I am making holupkis, which are like a cabbage roll up with beef and rice inside. So I've got all of my cabbage leaves taken off of the head. I do that by submersing the entire head into some simmering water for about 30 seconds, pull it out and carefully take off each one of the leaves. Um, and I try and remove as much of the core from the bottom, as you can see here. Um, so those are ready to go. Um, if you make this recipe, try and find the largest cabbage head that you can. You want a pretty decent size leaf to roll up these. And obviously the further into the head of cabbage you go, the smaller leaves are gonna get. So make sure that you get a pretty big one to begin with. Um, I've got two pounds of ground beef here. To that, I am going to add some onions and peppers, which I have diced up. We've got two eggs, some salt and pepper, and we're gonna add in a cup of uncooked rice. This is just jasmine rice. Um, and then we are also gonna need some things for a sauce. So I have some of my home canned tomato sauce. I've got some tomato soup, and I have two cans of diced tomatoes. To my ground beef, I am adding in about a half cup each of diced peppers and diced onion. This is optional. You don't have to put those in if you don't like it. Cracking in two eggs. Of course, some salt and pepper, about a teaspoon or so of salt, and I just add in a dash of pepper, probably no more than a quarter teaspoon. I'm also throwing in a teaspoon of dried parsley. Next, some rice goes in, a cup's worth. You can use whatever rice you'd like. We prefer either basmati or jasmine. I'm just gonna get my hands in there and mix it all up really well. For the sauce, I am using a quart jar of home canned tomato sauce. You would want to find a 28 ounce can at the store. And then just your typical, I think it's, are they 11 ounce cans of tomato soup? I'm not sure anymore at the store, but just you know your regular can of tomato soup at the store. And then two, um, I think these are 15 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. And I'm really pushing the limits here with this bowl, but I didn't, have anything else clean so I used it and it worked. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this sauce mixture on the bottom of my baking dish for the holupkis to go on top. To assemble our holupkis, you're gonna take one cabbage leaf and about a half cup, maybe only a third of a cup of the meat mixture and add it to the center. I like to kind of form it into a log shape. And then it took me a second here to figure out how I wanted to <laughs> roll this up, but you're gonna roll one side over, roll the sides in, and then continue to roll it all the way. There's one halupki ready to go. We're just gonna keep doing this until our pan is full. I'm adding in enough sauce on the top to make sure that these are well covered. Then this is going to go into the oven at 400 degrees for about an hour until the internal temperature is about 165 degrees.
Now I made a second one to go in the freezer. Whenever I'm making a recipe that is a bit more hands-on, takes a bit more time, I try to always make at least two, if not three, and then put some in the freezer. I just think that's a better use of my time. So I'm wrapping this in saran wrap first, throwing some aluminum foil on top, and this will go into the freezer. I'm putting it in raw, and I will make sure to bring it out the night before I bake it and to just proceed to bake it like I would if it was fresh for an hour at 400 degrees. Later this evening, I had some time to prepare a breakfast I've been wanting to for a while, but it requires some extra time that I don't always have in the morning. So we're doing it tonight. These are crepes and I am making a double batch. So I am throwing in here four cups of milk and four eggs. Four tablespoons of sugar, throwing in about two teaspoons worth of vanilla and two teaspoons of baking powder. And about a half a teaspoon of salt and three cups of flour, just all purpose flour. And I like doing this right in the blender because I can just make one thing dirty and use this to put it right into the pan. I have my pan over medium heat. I'm going to grease this and make sure it's good and hot before adding in my batter. You want to move pretty quickly, about a quarter cup's worth of the batter in the pan and quickly swirl it around to coat the bottom. At the right temperature, each side should only take about 30 seconds. You can kind of see the edges start to brown. And then I run my spatula underneath those edges and flip it on over. Same thing, about 30 seconds. And then I just repeat this until all of the batter is used up. I did a double batch because I wanted some for now and I wanted some for later. Again, when I do things that are a little bit more hands-on, I try to make at least a double batch and throw some into the freezer for later use. To freeze these, I am laying them out flat on a tray lined with parchment. I'm gonna put them in the freezer until they are solid and then I will transfer them into a freezer bag for long-term storage. I'll probably keep these, not that they would last this long, we'll use these up pretty fast, but you could keep them in the freezer for about three months. Mixing up the filling as well, so everything is ready to go for the morning. One block of cream cheese, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a quarter cup of powdered sugar. And then I will just serve this with some sort of breakfast meat, we'll probably have bacon. So it is the next day, and this is the last day I'm gonna share a few recipes. I think I've mentioned it in the past in another video, but the way that I work um, when I make meals around here, so I typically will do, um, at least for dinner, I will cook Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evening, and then I always make extra so that we can have them Thursday and Friday. That's just what I've always done and it works best for us. Typically Thursday and Friday are a bit busier around here, so it's nice to not have to cook another meal. And none of us are really super picky. Um, we'll eat the same thing over and over, but I always mix it up. I'm always trying new things Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so it's not like we're always eating the same things. Um, and then Saturday and Sunday, um, I usually keep like pizza crusts made on hand in the freezer, buns, sandwich bread, 
That way we can do like cheesesteaks or sausage sandwiches, burgers, pizza, like, you know, just quick things that I can throw together on the weekend when we're really busy. So I've got three more recipes to share with you today. I have um, planned for dinner a creamy ranch chicken with parsnip fries and roasted Brussels sprouts. Okay, so I have my chicken thawing over there. I am working on my sides right now, the Brussels sprouts and the parsnips. So when I typically shoot a video, it's when Grant is napping, my youngest, he's two. Um, otherwise, it's just very loud. And sometimes, you know, that's just real life and you'll hear him in the background. But I always try and get most of my filming done while he's napping. Um, but I'm trying to be wise with my time today. I want to get this all done, but I also have other things I need to do that are best done when he's napping. And one of those things is mopping the floors. If I do it while he is awake, um, it just becomes like a water play thing for him and the kids are slipping and sliding. And you know, sometimes that's totally fine and I allow it, but the floors are just a disaster. We hadn't had any rain all of April and then we got what we'd normally get throughout the course of April rain wise in like three days and it's just a mud pit outside and we've been dragging it in and out for the last few days and they just need a good scrubbing without children playing and everything so I need to get that done today so I've tried to choose a meal that didn't have a lot of hands-on time not a lot of prep work so I mean this to me is not a meal that has a lot of prep work I just have to take the little bottoms off of the Brussels sprouts. I'm having them. I need to peel and slice my parsnips into French fries, um, get them seasoned and throw them in some oil. They're gonna go on the same pan here. I just have parchment lined pan and they cook for the same amount of time. So that's super simple. Um, you can get this done fast while I'm waiting for my chicken to completely thaw. Um, I can get to mopping my floors before the little guy wakes up. So if you've never had parsnip fries, they are really good. My kids will even eat these. Um, if I just sliced these up and like roasted them or like sauteed them in butter, my kids wouldn't eat them. But if I cut them into french fry strips, um, salt and pepper, maybe some um, uh, paprika, they will devour them. And the, uh, the parsnips I think are actually really sweet. I actually like them better than carrots. Um, and we like carrot fries as well. I just think it's a, it's a good way at least for me to get my kids to eat more vegetables without them really knowing they're eating vegetables because I mean who doesn't like french fries okay I've got my veggies prepped here and I'm gonna get them seasoned and oiled so I used about a pound's worth of Brussels sprouts and I'm gonna put in probably like four tablespoons worth of oil Whenever I am roasting something and I want it to be at least a little bit crispy, I make sure to get them really well coated in oil. Then I'm going to add probably like a half teaspoon or so of salt. I'm using Redmond's Real Salt. That's all I use here. I'm going to do just a little dash of pepper. I'm going to do probably mm, teaspoons worth of paprika. I'm gonna do some minced garlic, and I forgot I need a spoon for that. I had to grab some honey. So I'm gonna do about two cloves worth of minced garlic, and about two to three tablespoons of honey. And that is all I'm going to do to these Brussels sprouts. Just gonna get them really well mixed up and get them onto my sheet pan and then I will work on the parsnips. Now if you don't like this flavor combination, there are a bunch of other ways you can do this. Um, a honey and balsamic glaze is a really good one. 
um, garlic parmesan. You can just do like a browned butter or just a garlic butter on them roasted. Um, if you've only tried Brussels sprouts one way, try them a few other ways before you totally rule them out. It took me a little while to find some that I really enjoyed. All right, so these are good. I'm gonna get them onto one half of my, whoops, sheet, chair, sheet pan here. Whenever I'm roasting things and I want them to be crispy, and that shouldn't be in there. I have some bottoms in here. Um, whenever I want things to be crispy, I try and space them out so there's good airflow in between them. Um, I just think I get a better, crispier result. If they're piled on top of each other, some of them just end up mushy. All right, got my bowl rinsed out. I'm gonna throw in here all of my parsnips. Again, I'm going to generously coat them in olive oil. My hands are wet, I don't wanna dump them into the salt. Gonna put in about a half teaspoon's worth of salt. Now this is how I do any of my fries, whatever veggie that may be. Um, always salt and pepper. I usually do paprika, about a half teaspoon to a teaspoon's worth. And I'm gonna grab some garlic powder and onion powder. Probably like quarter teaspoon or so of each of those. And that's it. I'm gonna stir these up and get them on the other half of my sheet pan. So you want your oven good and hot. I have it preheated at 400 degrees. They're going to cook for roughly 25 to 30 minutes. I check on them halfway, flip them if I feel like it. Sometimes I don't, and they always turn out fine. Um, but they're gonna go in here. I'll set the timer for 15 minutes, check them, maybe flip them, and I will call them done right around the 25 to 30 minute mark. I've got two. These are pretty large chicken breasts. Um, I am going to pound them out until they're nice and thin. Um, I want to make sure that they're all going to cook evenly and we're not going to have, you know, nice and juicy in the center and then kind of dried out around the edges. I want them to cook nice and even. So we're going to pound them out. There we go. They're pretty nice and even all the way across. Um, I'm gonna season these with just a little bit of salt and pepper. I've got my frying pan heating up with some olive oil in it, and I am going to cook these until they are all the way done. Chicken is done, so we're gonna get it out of the pan and onto a plate here while we make up our sauce. And I'm just gonna do it right in the same pan. I'm gonna turn it down though. To the pan now, I am adding in two tablespoons of butter. To our butter, I am adding in a heaping tablespoon of flour. And I'm gonna mix that all up. I'll let this cook for just maybe like 30 seconds to a minute, somewhere in there. And I'm going to add in slowly one cup of chicken broth while stirring. And you wanna do it slowly, otherwise you're gonna end up with really chunky sauce, lots of lumps in it. We don't want that, we want a nice smooth sauce. And to this, I'm gonna add about a half cup of milk. 
mix that together and make sure you scrape up all the brown bits that contain lots of flavor on the bottom of the pan. Sorry for all the noise in the background. Mr. Grant is now awake. So there will be no more peace and quiet. Which is fine, that's just real life, right? I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of sour cream. Stir that in. All right, now I am adding in two tablespoons worth of my homemade ranch seasoning mix. I will link the video on how to do this um, on the screen here and down below in the description. If you don't have this on hand, you can just use a packet of like the, the ranch seasoning mix you can get at the store. Um, I start off with two tablespoons, give it a taste, and then you can add um, more seasoning if you would like more. I'm gonna add in just a little bit more onion powder and garlic powder. It's just how we like it. What, baby? But you don't have to do that, that's optional. You can really customize this however you want. But that there is our sauce. I am going to slice up the chicken and add it back in here so everything can mingle before we eat. There we go. Dinner is served. Didn't really take a whole lot of time or prep work, at least in my opinion. Um, maybe like 10 minutes, if that, probably less than that to prep those and get them seasoned. 30 minutes in the oven, but I don't have to do any of that work. The oven is working for me. The chicken, um, just to um, pound that out thin and season it. Let the frying pan do the work there. That probably took about 10 minutes until they were done cooking. Um, maybe another five minutes to make the sauce and dinner is ready. All right, you guys, that wraps up this week's video. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. I hope you enjoyed maybe getting a little bit more meal inspiration, some new recipes to try. If you enjoy seeing what we eat in a week, let me know. I mean, this is just what I always do. This is, you know, I'm always cooking things and a lot of times to me it seems really boring, but maybe to others it doesn't. So let me know if you want to see more of what I am making for my family. Um, but also, Moving forward, I just wanna make sure that I am putting out content that is just not contributing to like the ridiculous amount of noise <laughs> in the world. Um, I really want to just create a space of, of peacefulness and education and help in any way that I can. Um, so let me know what are the things that you are most interested in that would be the most helpful to you, areas that you're struggling with, something that you want to learn. Do you want more canning content, um, bread making, more gardening, um, homemaking, maybe how we budget. Um, and I was also thinking about doing a Q&A. I don't know if you'd be interested in just getting to know me a little bit better. I could maybe even bring in my husband if he agrees to it. He's not really a fan of the camera. That's why you don't really see him on here, except maybe like a few cameos helping me outside in the garden. Um, but maybe I could bring him in and we can just answer any questions that you all may have. But that would be super helpful to me if you can just comment down below what you're interested in, or if you wanna see it all, just say, Kelsey, I wanna see it all. Um, and I might also put up a poll over on the community tab um, that you can go and you can just click a button and let me know. That'd be super helpful. I'd really appreciate it. But with that said, thank you all so much for coming along with me today. I hope you all have a wonderful blessed week and I will see you next time. Take care.